Welcome to the Thursday night Bible study. Our journey through the Bible is coming to an end soon. This is the book of Revelation chapter 16 tonight, but it's part nine. When you study the book of Revelation, when you study the great tribulation, you see these cataclysmic events, these disastrous events that occur to everything that you know of when you step outside. These disastrous events to, for example, the sun will be darkened in the great tribulation. The moon will turn red. The stars come out of their sockets. The earth wobbles like a drunken person off of its axis. The trees are burned up. The plants are burned up. The oceans turn to blood. The sea creatures in the oceans die. Massive amounts of humanity are killed by one thing or, or the other. The cities fall down. The mountains come tumbling down. The buildings of the cities come down. The rivers are affected. The groundwaters are affected. The animals go berserk. Everything you know of is cataclysmically affected, impacted, destroyed, altered in the Great Tribulation. And you read about that in the Old Testament. You read about it in the New. You read about it as we've been doing in the book of Revelation. Some of these events are linked to and are started by the seals that the Lord Jesus Christ undoes the seals of a book. And when he undoes the seals of the book, and we study this, events occur. Famine, starvation, wars, disease, killing of people. And so the Lord Jesus Christ undoes seven seals. Then you have these trumpets, seven angels of God. And every angel of the seven is given a trumpet. And when they call that trumpet, an event occurs, a cataclysmic event. A third of the oceans turn into the blood and everything dies in that third of the oceans. And all of the ships are destroyed in that part of the ocean. You have a third of the trees being burned up with one of the trumpets. You have all the grasses being burned up with that one trumpet, the first trumpet of the seven trumpets at the seven angels trumpet. The trees are burned up and then a third of the trees and then all the grasses are burned up. The second trumpet, a third of the oceans turn into blood and the ships in the ocean, a third of them in that area where the ocean turns into blood, those ships are just are destroyed. And then you go through the trumpets and all the events of the trumpets. Then there are the final plagues of God, the bowls or vials of wrath, which seven angels pour on the world during the Great Tribulation. We're going to study those final plagues of God tonight. But the thing, one of the points that I wanted to raise, among all the cataclysm, among all the events, and there's so many of them, it's almost impossible to keep track of them all. There's so many, you have to study it carefully. But among all these events, you get the idea that it's a long process of destruction, cataclysm, and plague. But here's the thing. God describes that it's going to take people by total surprise. It's going to shock people. It's going to come like a thief in the night unto the ungodly people. 
that deserve the righteous judgment and punishment of God on this earth. It's going to fall on those ungodly murderers, and they're called murderers in the Bible. They murder off believers of God. They hate Christians. They hate believers. They hate the righteous people. They murder them off. These are not nice people. They're engaged in every abominable idolatry and sin, and they're horrible, and they won't repent of it. God gave them opportunities. They won't. So these terrible people, you get the picture with all the vials and all the trumpets and all the seals being undone, and some of them go back and forth. Some of those seals are occurring later in time in comparison to the vials of wrath that we're going to read about and the trumpets. It appears the vials are the last plagues, but the trumpets and some of the seals, they, inter, they are interspersed in time. But what you are taught by God is in that time, it's going to take people by surprise. And it's compared to Noah. And when Noah went on that ark, let's look at that. Because I want you to understand that. We got to get perspective on how it overcomes people as a thief in the night. How it takes them completely by surprise. How the cataclysms hit so quick, they have no clue. They're delusional. They're getting deluded by the Antichrist and by Satan and by the beast. I'm sorry, and the false prophet. The Antichrist is a beast. But Satan and the false prophet. And they're also according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God finally ha has it with this group of ungodly people. Finally, there comes a time. They don't receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They don't receive the love and mercy of God forever. They don't receive eternal life. They hate God and they hate the Lord Jesus Christ and the only source of life. And there comes a time when God is going to send them a strong delusion. That they all might be damned that receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. That's about, by the way, the great tribulation. Possibly long before it as well. But let's get an idea. How quickly does it hit these people? Let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Let's start in verse 26. Matthew 17, verse 26. So this is most clearly about the great tribulation and the second coming of Christ, which follows up the great tribulation at the end of the great tribulation. Start in verse 24. For as the lightning that lighteth lighteneth out of the one part under heaven and shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. This is the day of the Lord. This is the Son of Man in his day. Why? Because he's the Lord and it's the day of the Lord. This is the Lord Jesus Christ in the day of the Lord. Verse, verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came. And destroyed them all. See how rapidly it overtook all those in the days of Noah. Noah was, by the way, the Bible says, a preacher of righteousness. There was a time where Noah was trying to convince people to repent and turn to God. He preached righteousness. They didn't buy what Noah was preaching. They didn't believe the truth. They were violent people back then. The earth, that the thoughts of man's heart were, was only evil continually, according to Genesis chapter 6. Read it yourself. Violence filled the earth. They were wicked, violent people. And God had had it with them. It repented him that he had made man. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the good news to Noah, the gospel to Noah, because that's what gospel means, glad tidings, good news. The Bible defines it that way. Two different places. The good news to Noah was if you build this ark, you're not going to die with all these ungodly people. And the only people that got on that ark were eight people. Noah, his wife, 
his three sons and their three wives. Those are the only people that got on the ark. Thousands of animals got on there. God saved thousands of animals. I only saved eight people. So in the days of Noah, what were all these ungodly doing? They were eating and drinking, marrying wives, given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it's compared to something else. Likewise, verse 28, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. They're completely taken unaware. They're so deluded in their ungodliness. They're not thinking about God. And Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 29, but, in, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he would show be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it in another area passage similar passage it says whosoever shall lose his life for mine my sake so if you try to save your life you're going to lose it you're going to basically lose your eternal life whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it i tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two women shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other left two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left now, people will try to teach you that this is a rapture to prove that it occurs at the second coming. Well, they don't read on or don't want to believe what Jesus says where they're taken to. And they answered and said unto him, where, Lord? So where? Where, Lord? What does that mean, where, Lord? They want to know where are these people taken? The two men are in the field. One's taken, one's left. The two women are grinding together in the field or wherever they are, grinding wheat or whatever, the one's going to be taken, the other left. Where are they taken to? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, tither will the eagles be gathered together. That's the carcasses of these people. They're taken in wrath and killed at the second coming. They're taken and the eagles, and God has a great feast for the birds. It's probably the marriage supper of the Lamb associated with other events when him coming and destroying armies with his word, the second coming of Christ. It is referred to as, as a supper. And he has a great feast for these birds. And those are these ungodly that are killed at that time. The angels come and gather all of these. The, those that are taken are things that offend, offend. They are ungodly. They are wicked. They are the children of the wicked one. And they are taken out of this world and destroyed and their bodies are gathered there where the eagles and the birds are feasting on them. So that gives you an idea how quickly it's going to come upon them, just like when Lot left Sodom. Fire and brimstone came, rained down, destroyed the ungodly. Noah went in the ark, it came down on all of those, and they were all destroyed. That's how it's going to be in the Great Tribulation. So when you see all these vials of wrath and these seals and all of that, there are some people that are given a chance to repent and they don't repent. We're going to read about that tonight. We're going to see what kind of people they are. Let's turn to, we're going to look at the final vials that are given to seven angels. They're called the, the I believe they're called the last plagues of God. And start in Revelation chapter 15. And look at verse 1. <clears throat> And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. That's what they're called, the last plagues. For in them is, a, is filled up the wrath of God. Let's turn over to chapter 16 and let's see what these are. Verse 1, and I heard a great voice 
out of the temple saying to the seven angels and these are the seven angels that have the last plagues of God each one is a vial or a bowl that is poured upon the earth go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image <clears throat> i want you to notice something a lot of these are like the things that god did to egypt through moses when egypt would not repent and release the children of israel and let them go so here you have a, a noisome and grievous sore that breaks out upon people that have the mark of the beast and those that worship his image. That reminds me of what God did to the Egyptians. He had them broke out, break out in boils and they broke out in boils such as, as that the ungodly magicians that were in Pharaoh's court couldn't even stand in front of Moses because they had boils all over their body. That's what's going to happen to those who take the mark of the beast that are still living at that time. They're going to break out into these grievous sores. This is before they're killed. <clears throat> and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. <clears throat> this is an event that occurs after the trumpet, the second trumpet, where, where a third of the sea, a third of the oceans and the seas turned into blood, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Uh, that was earlier in the Great Tribulation. Here, all, all of the oceans, okay? The sea becomes the blood of a dead man. Every living soul died in the sea. Everything that's alive in the sea dies. All the creatures, all the fish, all the animals. All the people in ships that are stranded out there, they all die. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. So you don't have any fresh water left anymore. The rivers and the groundwaters and all that fresh water is blood. Now you're going to think, why would God do that? Well, you know who caused all this destruction? Was the wickedness of Satan, the falling an fallen angels, and the evil people, what are called uh, children of the wicked one, that are there in the book of Revelations. Remember what we learned last week? These are mass murderers of believers. These people murdered off the believers and the saints and had Moses and Elijah killed and decapitated believers. Don't feel sorry for them when God pours his righteous punishment upon them. And we get it. We get an idea of that in verse five right here. And I heard the angel of the waters say, thou art righteous, O Lord, who, which art and was and shalt be, because thou has judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou has given them blood to drink for they are worthy. See, this is a righteous judgment of God. Some people get a bad attitude about God's judgment. They think they're in a better position to judge things than God. They criticize God doing things like this. They criticize his word. They say terrible things about the Bible. And they act like they know more than God. Well, they're nothing but a little creature. That's like a slug or a snail challenging the creator. It's like a, you know, a tick or a louse saying to the creator, you're bad because of what you're doing to the evil people. Just remember that men are only creatures. We're not the creator. We cannot make a living cell if our life depended on it. Not all the scientists in the world can make a living cell. They never have. You have trillions of living cells in your body. They can't make life. They never have. All they can take is the things that God made, the program of DNA that God made, and manipulate it. So here they are trying to judge God in what he could do. And they are not righteous like God, by the way. Just remember that. 
when you hear about God's righteous, here's what it is. Verse seven, true and righteous are thy judgments. That's what it is. Verse five, thou art righteous, O Lord. These angels know what they're talking about. They're angels of God. And the angel of the waters, the angel of the waters is the one that's given the vial, the bowl of wrath and pouring it upon the waters. That's the angel of the waters. And I heard the angel of the waters say, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be because thou hast judged us. It's perfect, pure righteousness. There's a loveliness and a perfection and a wonderment to the perfect righteousness of God. And everybody's going to know that one day. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now let me back up for a second. So the boils and the, the, the noise, the grievous sores that break out on those that take the mark of the beast or worship his image. I already mentioned how that's what happened back in Egypt. The waters turning to blood, that happened back in Egypt. The Nile River turned into blood and all the fish died in the river. That was one of the things that happened in Egypt. A lot of these things are not old. I'm sorry, are not brand new. They're old. They're as old as the book of Exodus to the beginning of Israel. Verse 8, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So do you think these people here then are saying, you know what, we deserve all of this, and you're righteous, God, and we should repent, and we should turn to you. We should give glory to you, because you're God Almighty, and we're not. That's not what's happening. This is their attitude in verse 9. And then we're scorched with great heat and blaspheme the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. These are not repentant people. These are evil people at the very end that deserve what they get. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. That's what happened in Egypt. One of the plagues that God put on the Egyptians, he put darkness on the Egyptians such that they could feel that darkness. This is the same thing. This darkness causes pain. They're going to gnaw their tongues in pain with this darkness upon the seed of the beast and his kingdom. It's full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. And then are they repenting after that? No, just like in Egypt, Pharaoh would not repent. Although God hardened Pharaoh's heart back there. So there are two things going on. But here, they're gnawing their tongues for pain and they're blaspheming the God of heaven, verse 11, because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Verse 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of this kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth onto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. These Devils are going out and deluding the kings of the earth, the leaders of the world, of the whole world. The kings of the earth and of the whole world. And they're gathering them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Could you imagine the futility, the delusional futility, the demented futility of what these Armies are gathering to do. You know what they're gathering to do? To destroy the believers of Israel is one thing. They're also gathering to fight against God Almighty. They're gathering to fight against the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes down with his angels. They're gathering to fight against God. 
you would think who in the world would do that? Well, these devils and these demons are convincing them to do it. And you get an idea about that when you go to, why don't we turn really quickly? They're being gathered to the battle of Armageddon. Let, let's read on about that. Then I want to show you how futile the whole thing is. Verse 15, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. That's a place in Israel. That's a valley in Israel, Armageddon. So he's gathering all these armies, all these nations to come and go to the battle of Armageddon. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Let me show you some of the futility of what they're doing. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. And the insanity of what they're doing. And verse 19, Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. These are the ones being gathered by the demoniac devils that go out of the mouth of the beast and go out of the mouth of the false prophet and go out of the mouth of Satan. And they gather all these kings of the earth and their armies. And I saw the beast and the kings of the, the earth and their armies gathered together. For what purpose? To make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Who are they making war with? Well, verse 16, the king of kings and the Lord of Lord. Verse 13, the word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is who they're, they're gathering to fight against God. Nothing in my mind could be mo more militarily idiotic and futile to, than to try to fight against God. But that's what they're gathering to do. See how deceived the devils can make people, and they are very deceived. Let's go back to Revelation 16. Let's finish this up. Gathered to Armageddon. And this seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done now watch this it is done then what's associated with the seventh vial that's poured into the air and the words it is done verse 18 there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great this is that great earthquake that we've read about in other places. This is the greatest earthquake that's ever been since humans existed. And watch what it does. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. Do you understand that the cities of the nations, all these cities, are going to fall down. All the buildings are going to fall down. They're all coming down. Cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God. We already studied that. To give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. Could you imagine that? Every island flees away. Great Britain, the Hawaiian Islands, the islands in the Mediterranean Sea. All of these islands flee. And the mountains were not found. The mountains are brought down. They're not found anymore. There are no mountains anymore. Do you see what this earthquake does? It shakes all the nation's cities down. They all fall. All the islands flee away. The mountains aren't found anymore because of this great earthquake. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Just like you read about back in Exodus with Moses. But this hail 
is different. Back then it was hail mingle with fire and there is hail mingle with fire in, I believe it's the trumpets, if I'm not mistaken. Here, hail comes down every stone about the weight of a talent. Now their talents are measured different ways by different nations, historically and ancient measurements. Some talents are somewhere in the range of 60 pounds. Some of them are hundreds of pounds. I don't know what the weight of this talent is, but put it this way. It's got to be at least 50 pounds or heavier because the lightest weight I can find for a talent historically was a 50 pound talent. So these are hailstones, 50 pounds, that pound um, fell upon men and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail for the, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now, we already read about the, the judgment of the great city Babylon. That, that's the next verse of chapter 17, verse 1. So there you have it. So we've gone over, and I'm going to stop here tonight. We've covered the seven last vials of God, and there's so much involved in that. What we're going to be doing, we're going to try to wrap up the book of Revelation next Thursday. And it's going to include the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the establishing of his kingdom, and the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven and the judgments that you read about there in the book of Revelation. We might not be able to cover it in part 10. It might take part 11. But we're going to try to get as far as we can next week. But thank you for listening tonight. Thank you for attending. Uh, thank you for being part of this fellowship. And God bless you. Good night.